The first stock cars were souped-up family sedans, but today they're custom-built for the racetrack. Each car body must match the contours of templates set by NASCAR, the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing. On the racetrack, the shape of a car can give it an aerodynamic edge over the competition. So in NASCAR races, car bodies must have uniform curves. The regulations put the focus on driver skill and make the race a fair one. They mold some of the car's body parts from a carbon fiber and Kevlar material. First, a technician applies a release agent to a mold for the car's front end. Then he sprays a paint undercoat into it. This undercoat will eventually transfer to the completed panel. A computerized cutter slices the carbon fiber and Kevlar fabric into strips. It produces 22 pieces, each one cut to fit a different section of the mold. The technician rolls epoxy resin onto the fabric, one strip at a time. Once the strip has been completely coated, he transfers it to the mold. He tucks the fabric into the contours and smooths out any big wrinkles. He layers the strips three deep in a crisscross configuration for structural integrity. A co-worker covers the carbon fiber with perforated plastic. They add layers of absorbent polyester and thick plastic, which they glue to the edge of the mold. They insert a fitting and connect a vacuum, which sucks out air and excess epoxy resin. The polyester material soaks up the resin as it flows through the holes in the first plastic layer. This both smooths and compacts the carbon fiber layers. Then it's into a hot oven to bake for three hours. This activates the epoxy and combines the layers of carbon fiber and Kevlar fabric. An employee removes the completed stock car panel and inspects it. Then it's over to a weigh station. At just under eight pounds, the part is lightweight yet virtually shatterproof. Meanwhile, at another factory, work begins on the stock car chassis. They build it from square steel tubing that's super strong. An employee welds the pieces together to create a support structure for the car. At the next station, a worker forces narrow steel tubing against a spiral bit to carve notches in it. This tubing is for the roll cage, the structure that protects the driver if there's an accident. The notches will help form better joints. He grinds the rough edges, creating a smooth surface to weld the tube to the rest of the roll cage. Once complete, the team transfers the roll cage to the mainframe of the chassis. They tack weld it before doing the final welds. The next part is called the rear clip. It holds the fuel tank and has mounts for the rear suspension. With the car framework now complete, a technician scans it using a digital measuring probe. The scan confirms that the dimensions are correct. They now assemble the various steel and carbon fiber body parts to the stock car framework. They measure the completed car body by laying template grids on it. The biggest one sits over the center of the car. They pull a gauge through the gaps between the templates and the car body. The gap cannot exceed the tolerances set by NASCAR. They often must tweak the shape of the body part to meet regulations. Once the car has been painted, they apply headlight decals where the real ones usually are. Real headlights would add too much weight and pose a safety risk if they shattered. It's taken three weeks of intensive work, 
but this stock car body is now ready for the mechanics. Things are about to pick up speed. 